demo tape, if it ever gets circulated, it'll probably make a lot of people pissed. figure the songs out while we're here. Um, when we, we do something like this, we get the song in pieces. Like, this is the rhythm track. I have to learn it again, because I, last time I played it was in the studio. And then, get like the solos. That's what the solo sounds like, soloed out. Another solo. solo. No Chris solo there. Here's another one. And you, just, you just keep going back and forth over it until you figure it out. So, And then the whole thing sounds like this. Feel right now we're sitting on some of the uh, we definitely are on the quintessential lineup and, and I think that my songwriting hasn't even been tapped yet because of what just happened with our new guitar player Chris coming in Chris is a, a genius and he's an unrealized talent and it's real easy because you know if you go over and you scratch him he kind of like bleeds music and, and so that was really cool for me we had a ballad on the record called the hardest part of letting go I wrote about me and my wife Pam she hates the song consequently because <laughs> the second half <laughs> is about Edgar Allan Poe you know uh, the Casco Monteado where he takes uh, uh, what's the guy say? Fortunato down into the cellars and he bricks him into the wall. He's mirroring him into the wall. I put that in the lyric and my wife thinks I want to brick her into a wall in somewhere. So she didn't <laughs> like the song. But, um, you know, we wrote that and, and Chris actually contributed on that. And it went from being a, a good song to being something that was really a masterpiece. And um, I don't say that because I was involved in it. I say that because the song really is that way. I used to listen to it. I would get really emotional because of what it meant for me with my, my finding my soulmate. And... and um, and as soon as she said she didn't like it, I couldn't stand hearing it anymore. So uh, i gotten over that, and I like listening to it again. But you know, to know that we have this potential as a guitar team and that we can uh, get into some really mind-blowing stuff. Because when Chris came in, you know, a lot of the stuff was already written. We haven't had a chance to really explore what all his talents are yet. <laughs> Yeah, um, it's it, well. Obviously, those are the FEMA coffins that everybody's talking about being in the Midwest, and and I haven't seen them myself, but um, you know I've seen pictures, and and um, you know we had this symbology that was like the uh, Hebrews being marched through the Red Sea, and uh, all the people that are in the Homeland Security jumpsuits with the uh, barcode on their head. You know, it doesn't say in the Bible if the barcode's going to be going this way or if it's going to be going this way. So I figured, you know, we would do something kind of like some cool imagery stuff, you know. That way the satellites can see it from on top. Maybe, yeah, perhaps. Um, but uh, I, I thought about that. How, how can we make this kind of look cool? We'll make it look like a mohawk, but then when you zoom in on it, it's actually their barcode. And um, we uh, put around the surrounding parts of it because, you know, I was, I was really, when I got saved, I really wanted to know what I was doing. You know, I didn't want to just blindly say, okay, I'm a Christian now. What do I do? Okay, 10%. Okay, good. See you later. You know, whatever. So I actually really read uh, a lot of the Bible and, and stuff. And one of the things that I noticed was in the story back um, with the Egyptians and stuff that out of all the plagues that happened, one of them was with the flies. And the flies got on everybody except for the Hebrews. 
and um, it was just really I insane to see that the chosen people had been left out of this really vile plague that had happened, and and it was just one one thing that just kind of went around the outside of the picture. So, in the top of it, there's kind of like a Stargate kind of sunburst there, where people are going off to this light that they're being let off, like come to the light, and in uh, what's the Poltergeist movie? It's really a bug zapper. <laughs> With the rest of the record, you know, when you look inside of it, there's there's a lot of other stuff in there, like uh, the symbology with... We've got the one person who's covered in flies, which, you know, kids kind of gravitate towards that kind of artwork. They like stuff that's like that, you know, graphic stuff. And, and we've got other pictures of Vic actually pulling the hood off of this person and showing that, you know, he's actually a victim and, and you know, he's... Either, either Vic is saving him or, or not, you know? And I look at it like this. He's kind of like saying, what are you doing under there? Let's get out of this situation. You know, I consider myself to, to be uh, um, alone as far as, you know, in, in our genre with people who really are willing to go out and stand on a limb and, and say, you know what, you can hate me if you want, but at the end of the day, I'm going to do what's right. Because doing what's right isn't popular. It's not. And, and that's why people, you know, they, they like to take pot shots at me. But at the end of the day, you know, uh, I do a lot of stuff that, that I know I'm not going to have any conscious, that I'm not going to have any problems with myself when I go to sleep at night. You know, because I see people do stuff and they compromise themselves and they, they sing songs and they think that they're not going to affect them. You know, you say that stuff and it comes out of your mouth and it, you, you portray that stuff to other young minds and they hear that stuff, they believe that. You know, I don't want to be responsible for making anybody stumble. I want to make sure that they become better people. In the final equation, you've you've spoken about a transformation or an awakening. Can you tell us? Was that overnight, or was that a process, or was that just going back to something you were at your core? I mean, can you speak about uh, you know the 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 changes in your life? Yeah, it, it was pretty simple. I've always believed in God. That's why you know the first line of peace sells. But who's buying says? What do you mean? I don't believe in God. I talk to him every day. You know, when I was a kid, I was baptized as a Lutheran when I was four, and my mom had become a Jehovah's Witness when I was seven, and that just totally ruined my life. And then by the time I turned 15, I was so full of bitterness and, and just hatred for organized religion that I got into black magic and, and went down the route of the occult. And although I didn't pursue being a Satanist, you know, I was very much uh, agnostic and probably more atheist than I was anything because I just didn't want, I, I just didn't want to believe anymore because I was so spiritually abused. So when the time came when my arm had gotten destroyed in 2002, um, I had a terrible nerve damage to this hand and oddly it was this one. Anything else would have happened to my body, I could have had a leg cut off and I still would have kept playing. But my, my money maker here stopped working. I had to go, okay, what am I doing wrong here? Because there was a lot of stuff that was going on. And I was on a hill and I saw a cross and I looked at it and I just went, what have I got to lose? I've tried everything else. What have I got to lose? Six simple words and I became a Christian and, and I see the people that people don't like that are the hypocristians. You know what I mean? That's a good term. Yeah, I made that up. So um, I, uh, I just, I look at that and I'm, I, I'm not attracted to that and, and I see people that gravitate towards me, towards my family. They want to be with us because they know that they can say certain hard luck stories and we'll feel sorry for them. You know, I'll feel sorry for you but you ain't getting it. You know, unless it's real, they're not getting in. Megadeth Radio is, is a non-stop heavy metal, 24 hours, 
a day, seven days a week, and, and except for the Halloween show we put on and the Christmas music we're going to be adding uh, towards around Christmas time, um, it's just standard heavy metal classics that, that I like. A couple of zingers, weird stuff like, you know, B.B. King and Muddy Waters and some old stuff like that, like Stevie Ray Vaughan and some of the blues that inspired me. And then some of the older stuff that I, I liked as a kid growing up, Elton John, Led Zeppelin, uh, the Beatles, and stuff like that. But you, you know, you'll also see bands like Gore there, and that's not one of my favorite bands. I don't, I don't like them at all. But you know, the other guys in the band do. You know, there's there are bands that the other guys have picked that they like, and it's a it's a Megadeth station. It's not a Dave Mustaine station. Although you know, I did a lot of the work in the beginning. We're all participating now, and and I think you can tell because the, the playlist is so eclectic. You can listen to that all day long, and and you'll discover all kinds of great new music. else you'd like to add to the audience out there? I love you. You can believe it all. <laughs> Dave Mustaine, thank you so much for talking to us. You're welcome, Alex. Appreciate God it. God bless you, buddy. You bet. Me, it's me again. It's a two, but never to you. It's me and my brain hitting. You get down to your level. Can't just keep on thinking it's my fault. It's your two and I'll kick you distance. That kind has got to know. Is limited.